Um, so I think I've mostly said hi to everyone. Apologies if I didn't, but hi, I'm Holly. Um, I work here at Alpha and I help support the data team and the tech team from a human resources side. So the presentation that I'm going to go through with you is how you make that transition from academia into industry, or at least a few key points that I would suggest you guys have a think about um, if you are thinking about making that move. Um, the first point would be work diversity. So something that we in academia definitely strive to have, which I think sometimes in academia they have less of, is just a case of finding extra things outside of the day-to-day -day work that you're asked to do. So this might be um, the mix between the client-facing projects or you know putting your head down, getting on with some coding, but having extra things that you could do in terms of helping the wider business with recruitment. Um, it might be um, continuing your research. So we love the idea that even in academia, which I'm um, sorry, even in industry, wherever you are, it's an amazing strength for you guys to continue your research. Um, basic research, white papers, anything, because you guys have an amazing skill and amazing, you know, knowledge that we only want to help and enhance through um, industry. Um, so looking out for those extra things outside of the day-to-day -day tasks is definitely something I think is key for when you're moving into industry. Um, the other thing I think is style of work. So post-pandemic, um, there's been a couple of changes. Uh, you will see the, you know, people start to go back to the office, whether you're asked to go back almost um, wholly or it's a hybrid or there's remote working. So it's a case of, you know, what suits your work best? How do you best work? Do you prefer to be around other people? Um, so here at Arc as an example, we try and do a hybrid and um, just because it seems to work quite nicely to ask people to come into the office and at least every two weeks when we have our tech days, get everyone together, uh, walk, like talk through some of the projects we're working on just for the benefit of sharing those ideas, getting people different perspectives, because I think that is almost just as important as that you have that base of diversity of ideas and perspectives. Um, the other one is working as a team. So again, we host those um, tech days more for the benefit of us as a company, because when you have that diversity of ideas and when you have those people to bounce ideas off, and as George said, you're finding the best solution when you have considered different points of view. So as our team, we have our tech side, we have our business side, we have our softwares, we have our data. So there's a whole range of people coming from neuroscience, we've got people from computer science, we've got people from maths, and as well as myself, which contributes very little to this particular thing, but it's more, you know, my, my background in business. So it's just having a different element. So when I ask what may seem like a silly question, hopefully it sparks a different perspective um sometimes um but yes and then the other thing to consider is hours so you'll see jobs and they're nine to five and that's as it is and um, you'll see ones that are more flexible time um something to consider on whether you you know have other things that you want to prioritize whether you want part time um and you know that's just something for you guys to have in the back of your head when you are looking at these jobs or looking to move into industry um, and the other one is hierarchy. So in companies, they can be very structured. They can be like very tall structures. Uh, so you have a lot of people above you. You have a lot of people below you and you work your way through. Um, others tend to be a bit more flatter. So a small company like our client will tend to be a bit flatter. Um, so I can go and annoy George, even though he's the chief data scientist and he has to sort of listen. Um, but, <laughs> you know, it's the what works best for the different tech teams or the business teams will depend on the industry you're working in. Um, more than just money, um, I think this one is important because obviously every job you get will have a salary, which is great. Um, but I think outside of that, there's other financial and non-financial benefits that um, the job should be able to offer you. And um, so the financial ones would be to sort of um, insurance and um, private medical and things like that. But non insurance, you're looking at, you would be the front end of all driving forces in the industry. You know, you guys are coming from a background where you are doing the latest cutting edge research that, you know, can be harnessed and pushed into something to see your impact in real time. 
Um, and I think that's one of the really nice benefits is that you've seen your impact on an industry in a company um, as it is happening. Um, and then the final one that is support. So this might be wellbeing support. So here at Arclanger, that's predominantly down to me um, to look after our employees, to give them everything in terms of keeping them happy and healthy because it makes us work better as a company if our people are supported in that instance as well. Um, and then also learning and development from formal training, informal training, all sort of come down to the team that you're in. So we are very fortunate we have our um, software engineers. So although George said for you guys to learn about software engineering, which is a great skill to have and harder than he made out because I can't do it. Um, but isn't that you have our software engineers to help you guys transition into an area that maybe you aren't as familiar, but likewise, you would help other people transition into sort of more of the statistics or the analytic, analytics side of things. So, you know, everyone's got something to give and everyone's, you know, equally needing support in other areas that you maybe feel not as strong in. Um, and that's sort of comes down to the support that you've built within the team. This is just to give an overview on different entry points into industry. Um, so where the last slide was looking at points to consider when you are looking, if you are looking, um, this is more to consider where you may fit um, straight in off the bat. So entry level will be more, if you haven't really worked in industry, you're still looking to develop. Um, it's a really great position to start in, even if you can progress quite quickly through. Um, so it is looking to find people that will support you through that journey from the get-go. Um, entry level, uh, sorry, mid is more, you've done a bit, um, you're still looking to gain more. So it might be you're getting to the point where you can now start interacting with the clients or you feel comfortable to help other people in aspects as well as um, obviously still getting support from above. And then at senior level, this is more, you're pretty comfortable, you know what you're doing, you're quite capable to lead the team, um, if that is something that you would be interested in doing, like the senior positions will normally have that, you know, um, coaching aspect to their roles, which again is hugely important for you guys to be able to pass on the information that you have to the next generation coming through, um, and if you can support them from an academic into um, industry then that's great or it might be that you know even within acting you, you have someone that you can support to find out what it is that they're looking for so this information is just more to give you an idea on a structure and where you might position yourself within the industry and that's it <laughs>